call to order uh, the meeting, the town council, for Wednesday, March 4th, 2015. If we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we please have the roll call? Councilor Baybine? Present. Councilor Donovan? Here. Councilor St. Clair? Here. Councilor Blaze? Here. Councilor Hayes? Here. Vice Chair Katarina? Here. Um, it is now time for general public comments. Does anyone in the audience yeah. wish to speak? Not seeing anyone? <laughs> I'm going to open and close it. Yay! All at once. Uh, the minutes from February 18th. Does anyone have any comments, any adjustments, any corrections? No, I'd Move like approval. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? That's unanimous. Uh, any adjustments to tonight's agenda? No. no. Seeing none, we'll move on. Items to be signed, treasurer's warrants, and they're here. I will, I guess I sign them tonight. Oh, let's see, um, <clears throat> non-action items. None. None? Order number 15013, 7 p.m. public hearing. Oops, sorry. To schedule a public hearing and second reading on the proposed amendments to chapter 1002. The town of Scarborough shall fish, I can't even talk tonight, <laughs> shell fish Conservation ordinance pertaining to conservation time. Uh, is there anyone from the general public who wishes to speak on this? Hearing none, close the public hearing. What is the pleasure of the council? Move approval. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Manager. I forgot yeah, the I manager's comments. Can you, yeah, I, I need I'm sorry, yeah. I, I've got them backwards. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, no, I, oh, certainly okay. motions are in order, but I, I wanted just to speak to this first and lay out some options Thank for you. you. As I uh, sh foreshadowed last time you took this up, we now realize there's some additional work that needs to be done for further compliance with the Department of uh, Labor regulations. That uh, that material has been drafted and it's scheduled to be taken up by the Shellfish Commission at their meeting next week, I believe. So I might suggest, um, though it would have been nice to get this all done before April 1st, which is the renewal period for licenses, that, that's not going to happen. Um, I, th I would suggest you have a couple of options to consider in light of that. One would be to simply table this matter and let the other catch up to it. Uh, or you could defeat it and we'll wrap uh, this small little piece into the larger uh, matter and have that all come to you comprehensively at the same time. That would be nice. So I, I suggest one of those options would be your best one this evening. What is the pleasure of the council? So could I make a motion to do that? To do? I'd like to make a motion to um, indefinitely postpone this and bring it all together in one nice neat package. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? Um, I, yeah, I think personally, I always like it when things are um, wrapped up together, and I feel like this is sort of just out there in the wind mm -hmm. by itself. And speaking from an ordinance perspective, it would be better, I think, if it was all put together nicely. So that's just my feeling on it. Anybody else? We have a motion to table indefinitely. Is that correct? Um, she said postpone or postpone. which right. effectively is the same. Okay. Get, uh, get rid of it, basically. <laughs> <laughs> all folks in favor? <laughs> it's unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. I expect you'll see this on the March 18 agenda. Thank you. Order number 15016, a 7 p.m. public hearing in action on the new request for a combined massage establishment massage therapist license from May Hui Lu. Doing business as Flower Salon Incorporated, located at Six Pine Point Road. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak on this? Seeing <laughs> nobody, <laughs> I will close the public hearing. What is the pleasure of the council? Move we'll approval. Second. Any discussion? Welcome to Scarborough. <laughs> we have a vote on this, please. 
All those in favor? Right. Anyone opposed? That's unanimous. Order number 15017, 7 p.m., public hearing in action on the new request for a massage establish, establishment license from Suzanne Fort and Eric Dobkins doing business as the spa at Scarborough, located at 311 Beach Ridge Road. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak on this? Seeing nobody, I will close the public hearing. What is the pleasure of the council? Move approval. Second. Any discussion? I just want to indicate this is the uh, former Lucinda's right. spa. This yeah. is, and I bring that up only because it's a contract zone. Uh, in that zone, the yep. use mm. does extend to future users. Yep. Uh, so the clerk and I did research that, so it's appropriate for you to consider this license. Interesting. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? None? That's unanimous. I don't see any old business at this time. Uh, under new business, order number 15018, act on the annual seasonal road posting. <coughs> the weight restrictions, if necessary, from March 5th to May 15th. Spring must be coming. Yeah. Manager Hall, would you like to speak to this? This is an uh, annual rite of passage. Uh, typically, it's uh, not as much snow as on the ground when we bring this to you, but uh, as many of you know, traversing our roads is everywhere in, in the state and northeast. Uh, frost is already coming out of the ground, so it's appropriate that we get these roads posted. Uh, and uh, there will likely be enough cold weather, and we do make accommodation for getting heavier equipment so long as they move uh, in the early morning hours or overnight hours when there's still you know, good frost in the ground, <coughs> really the daytime hours that are troublesome. So uh, we work closely with the business community to uh, accommodate their needs. What is the pleasure of the council? Move approval. approval. Second. Any discussion? No. Mr. Babine. Yeah, I have two questions, actually, for the manager, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. First one is, um, is approval required by state statute? Is that why we see this? I believe it is. I see the clerk nodding her head. It doesn't. Um, it's not something we can delegate so annually it can just be approved. I can double check with the state, but as far as I know, we have to do it. Sure. The second question I had is if you look at the actual chart that was provided by Mr. Shaw, the bottom it says, note, other roads may be posted as deemed necessary by the Public Works Director. So I just wanted to, um, so we won't see this again, but I would think that if he can post any other roads that aren't in the list, I would think he would be able to actually post these without our approval anyways. So I just wanted to kind of point to that reference. All right, we'll check the statute. Yeah. It may be that he, uh, by title, has some delegated authority in that regard. Um, Whatever makes it easier. Yeah. Yeah, if it's simpler on the council and we don't need to come to you, uh, though I suspect there's a bit of a public purpose served by having it on sure. your agenda. Uh, so, but we'll, we'll research and get that answer. Any other questions or comments? What is the pleasure of the council? Move approval. Second. All those in favor? That's unanimous. Standing and special committee reports and liaison reports. We will start with Mr. Babine. Thank you. Um, really the only report to uh, update is regarding our finance report. Um, regarding our joint standing committee that we share with the school board, um, just uh, three dates to post, or actually four dates to post out there. First is um, our next two regular session meetings are on March 12th and March 24th at 1.30 p.m. here in Chambers. Um, the purpose of both of those meetings is to progress and move forward um, the agenda regarding the uh, town hall public hearing format of uh, presenting our mutual budgets to the uh, public. Um, and then that third meeting is the actual public hearing um, for that or the public presentation, which will be April 29th at 7 o'clock p.m. at the high school auditorium. Um, uh, both uh, Mr. Siazzo and myself will be working with um, the manager and superintendent and others to draft a uh, public notification, article in the paper, and uh, get, get out the word um, as much as possible. And also working on the format, and then um, we will actually present to you a later date what that format will be and kind of what our individual roles and collective roles will be as well including our leadership uh, in our chairwoman and uh, the chairwoman of the school board. Um, for the town committee, um, I do want to mention that actually there is another kind of a joint session in there on April 1st at 6 p.m. Uh, the ever and most important uh, function of reviewing our audited financial statements will be at 6 o'clock p.m. 
Um, so uh, I did see, and I wanted to thank the manager because he printed out and provided us with a hard copy as well. So um, that is uh, nice to see. And then for our regular town council uh, finance committee, our next two meetings are March 11th and March 25th, both at 4 o'clock p.m. here in Chambers. On March 11th, we will be um, talking with Mike Shaw and other parties, including uh, we're, uh, the CEO of EcoMaine, regarding solid waste and the impact to the community, as well as a presentation and beginning discussions around the, um, it's called a pay per bag or a pay as you throw, there's different titles for it, but uh, kind of uh, starting to explore what that um, might entail. And then on the March 25th will be county government in which we've asked our county commissioner and county manager to join us to talk about their budget. And um, I did want to mention that on April 1st, I've had a preliminary conversation with Councillor Holbrook. Um, so the, there's a lot of stuff that's going to be going on, so get your calculators and your uh, financial hats on because it's going to be a very busy day for us regarding finance. Um, so at 6 o'clock we start with the review of the audit with jointly with the school board. I believe the manager is setting a goal in which um, he'll be presenting us with his budget on that day. And um, my goal is as well is that I'll be making a presentation to you in the community um, in our regular meeting and part of finance um, around the budget timeline, what is included, what it will entail uh, for our participation for the review and some changes that um, we've worked with Tom regarding how he's going to present that with his staff, which is very, very exciting. So. Um, Sean, get ready for the homework. Not to interrupt you, but is that all? Did you say that was the first, also April 1st? Yes. I'm sorry. Yep, yep, sorry. So um, starting at 6 p.m., it really starts at 6 p.m. 6 to 7 is the joint with the school board for the audit, and then 7 o'clock is our meeting, and then that's where a lot of work is, will be presented to you. Okay, thank you. And that's all I have for our committees. Great, thank you. Councilor John? Uh, uh, just to, to supplement, uh, <clears throat> Councilor Bayvine's comments about uh, finance. The Board of Education, the uh, uh, State uh, Education Board, uh, uh, issues a preliminary report uh, on how they distribute uh, their revenue. And that has now come out. It's not final, <clears throat> but uh, it did note uh, that, uh, and it's a formula. So we're not talking about the governor's budget or what the legislature does. This is a different process in uh, Augusta. Uh, and uh, the formula upon which uh, the distribution is based evaluates every community every year. Uh, we, uh, upon this report, are likely to lose on the order of $1 million in state aid. So that's, uh, that's a real significant effect on our budget considerations, and I'm glad we know it early so that we can all be kind of talking about what the implications of something like that are, just so that people at home will understand why that's so. We had a dip in enrollment. That was a significant factor. And Scarborough's property values, a good, good news, obviously, for those property owners in our community uh, are very strong, stronger than other places in the state. And those two factors, one going up and the other going down, are pretty important factors in this formula. So uh, the consequence is uh, we're going to have to roll up our sleeves and work that much harder to find good solutions uh, for the budget that's coming up. Thank you, Councilor Donovan. Councilor Sinclair. I don't have anything. Oh well, it's not hasn't it hasn't happened yet. But tomorrow night is our first meeting um, in regards to the parking down at Higgins Beach. Um, so we'll be talking about that tomorrow night. Um, it is not open to the public, um, so it's just for those committee members at that time. And ho so hopefully I'll have a um, a good report uh, in two weeks. Great, thank you. Um, and just so the public will know, the reason it's not open to the public, it's not an official town meeting, so it doesn't have to be open to the public, just Thank in you. case, to anyone. <laughs> Councilor Blaze. Uh, um, oh, my. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Hayes. Yeah, good evening. A um, couple things. One, on, on February 10th, the, the Coastal Water and Harbor Advisory Committee meeted. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shoot, excuse me. Um, 
not much to report, but they did talk about there was a, a piling that was broken during the dredging operation that's going to be repaired, which is fine. Um, there also is some, some issues around moving a day marker by the Coast Guard, which is going to be done. Um, and the other thing they announced is that the, the boat ramp at Clay Pitts is in the need of some maintenance and repair, and that's going to be taken care of. So that was kind of the highlights of that. Um, the same evening, the, the Shellfish Conservation Committee met. Um, they elected new officers, so Robert Wett was rec um, nominated chairman, Liam Erickson is vice chair, Tim Downs was treasurer, David Green was secretary. Um, the other thing they're looking at is they're looking at maybe changing the current crab traps that they're using, um, and they it voted to change the, the, the ordinance that we had talked about tonight that we're going to take up at a later date. So those are kind of the highlights of that meeting, that they, and they will again meet next week on the 10th, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. The other that committee that met was a transportation committee, and they pretty much the conversation was focused around some of the scheduled work at the Oak Hill intersection out here. Um, there was lots of conversation. The intent is to try to make it safer for pedestrians trying to cross. The, the issue that did come up we spent a lot of time talking about is in the original proposal was changing the right turn lane as you go by Walgreens and kind of mm -hmm. taking that out. There was a lot of conversation around that about does that impact motorists and how does that feel. It was kind of tabled. One of the suggestions, was, which I thought was a great suggestion, was let's talk to some of the business owners mm -hmm. and others and see what they think about that. So that's sort of, sort of in play. We'll come back and talk to you about it. And actually, anybody that's in the audience that can let us know. I think the number was, Tom, you were there. It was 90 cars per hour on yeah. average is, is used. Yeah, about right. one every 40 seconds. Oh, yeah. and, and so the, the concept was to take that out and to kind of make it into some green space. Um, it's not, there is some cost associated with that. So I think if anybody at home or wants to let us know how they feel about that, let us know and we'll take that into our consideration. Thank you. Council St. Clair, did you have a question? <laughs> I did. Like, I know I have a question. I was like, I was like what? Um, I, I just want to make sure I'm clear. They they want to take away the left hand turning lane, so like by the Walgreens. So, right. so if you're going southbound right. on Route One, uh huh. If I'm going south, then it's you're heading towards South Portland. Right. I'm I'm talking about know. heading towards South Portland. No. You're no, talking no. about heading towards yeah, South. Oh, okay. All right. Like, okay. I get confused as what you mean by north and south. Get a right oh. turn lane that is closest to right uh, to uh, Walgreens. Okay, so they want to take that and bump, get rid of that, bump it, bump. Make um, it into a green space. And, and okay, all right, uh, okay. Is that, uh, is, interesting. is that the lane, so I'm confused too. Uh, I, I is it, that's not the lane that goes down Gorham Road, is it? No. You're yeah. trying to go down Gorham <laughs> Road? Yes, yes. No. yes. No, you're not taking that away. No, I'm <laughs> We were interested in getting some feedback. It was a lot of conversation <laughs> we're about feedback. <laughs> yeah, we, there was a lot of conversation, and, and some okay. of these very issues came up. Yeah, so I'll be interested in seeing what the traffic pattern yeah, changes. This was a workshop with council over a year ago, and frankly, with the passage of time, that's yeah. one of the reasons we wanted to yeah. refresh the conversation. Right. Yeah, I had, I didn't, I had not. I don't even, I don't even recall discussing that. I it, wasn't it was before me. Yeah. Also, it really yeah. the concept plans that were. That would be great. Were, uh, yeah. Talked about yeah. it in the workshop. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not trying to no, no, need I, anything. I, I just, um, I, I'm. All right, back really curious about it. Oh, I'm sorry. That's no, okay. I mean, what was good about <laughs> it is actually one of the committee members right. suggested let's talk to some people and yeah. see right. how they feel about it and take that input. So I think that's yeah. part of the intent of talking about it tonight. If anybody's got any feelings, yeah. let us know and we can. All right, super. Um, last but not least, uh, Legislative Policy Committee. I will be going back up to Augusta on March 12th uh, to meet with all the other town managers and selectmen and town councilors and whoever on this committee to uh, discuss whatever is happening at, in the legislature at that point. I will tell you things are hopping up there right now. Uh, a lot of hearings, work sessions and whatever. And I encourage all of us and encourage anyone from the public who's interested in uh, how legislation is potentially going to affect us as taxpayers in the town of Scarborough to pay close attention uh, to that. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me because I'd be interested in people's thoughts so I can bring it up there to the MMA meeting. Uh, and there's no March meeting on the Conservation Commission. So I've got nothing else to say. 
Which brings us to the town manager yeah, report. A couple of points of interest uh, to dovetail on Councillor Babine's comments. Uh, this is the audit. Um, this will be your only copy, so please <laughs> keep it handy. Don't lose it. You may, uh, I think you'd benefit from bringing it on April 1st. I'll send a reminder out. Um, and as was mentioned, that is a joint session. Uh, it's a requirement for the auditor. The auditor works for you and the school board. It's, it's, uh, and so the presentation will be to both bodies and for efficiencies, we do it together. Uh, as was mentioned, um, again, by Councilor Babine, um, yeah, April is the budget review month, so March is my budget preparation month. So we're very, uh, very much fully involved in that. Um, my department budgets are due this Friday. Um, we are switching to a new budget format, which I think will make it easier for the finance committee, the council, and the public to really uh, uh, understand, digest, uh, and really focus on the real important matters in the budget. Um, that's a, a bit of a daunting task for myself and staff, just switching to a new format. But I, um, I know it's going to be worth it. So we're working feverishly right now to, to make that goal. Uh, also, just I want to mention, we're doing assessing interviews tomorrow. Uh, Chairperson Holbrook is part of that process uh, to represent the council's interest. And we have two very qualified candidates we're interviewing. And we're also uh, inviting back in for a second conversation, uh, Cumberland County to discuss contracted services. That was not an option available to us last time. Uh, they're about 18 months into this venture, and it's a viable option that I think we need to fully um, consider along with all of our other options. So we'll be doing that. Uh, we'd like to, we're trying to move fairly quickly through this process, and that appointment is a council appointment. So I think you'll see this certainly uh, in April at the very latest. Another thing that's been keeping me busy, uh, we instituted a town-wide for all non-union positions uh, new performance evaluation uh, process this year, which has been uh, sorely needed, long overdue. Uh, this is the final piece of the A classification program that we did three years ago. It is culminating in this final uh, uh, performance evaluation process. Uh, again, it's, it's a new process for us all, so it's been a bit of a a time drain, but um, very, very important process, and feedback so far has been very positive from staff. And just a couple of things to put on your calendar, perhaps. Um, the Land Trust has a couple of things coming up. Uh, they'll have a second community conversation, they're calling it, for the Benjamin Farm property. They had one back in late February, but again, tomorrow night at the library, excuse me, at Wentworth School, uh, starting at 7, they're having what they characterize as a Benjamin Farm uh, community conversation. I think it's really just intended to get folks together and have an open dialogue about what the vision is of that property. So if you have any interest, uh, do try to attend. And also their annual meeting um, is on March 12th here at Town Hall at 7 p.m. And that's usually a, a pretty good session. They, they do some business, uh, but they also have a featured presentation uh, entitled Scarborough's Hidden Rivers. Mm -hmm. So it might be of interest to you. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to mention again something that Councilor Babine touched on, that April 29th town hall, town hall style. Uh, the clerk and I are researching, but we'd like that to serve uh, the public, the official public hearing purpose as well. So we'll need to notice that, and, mm -hmm. and as was suggested, we want to publicize that regardless, but we'll, we're going to um, provide the proper legal notice they will require uh, attendance by the council as well at that at the session, uh, really so you're, uh, they are present to receive comments. And we're working through the mechanics, logistics of, uh, of making sure that evening goes smoothly and productively and uh, thoroughly. So that's all I have tonight. Great. Thank you. I'm going to start with Councillor Hayes on the Councillor comments. Yeah, I think, you know, it's kind of been touched on tonight that, you know, as we kind of move into the budget season and some of the things we've talked about happening at the state, um, just encourage everybody to stay engaged, kind of stay informed about things that are happening as we go through this process. If you have any issues or comments, please let us know. I think we're going to be faced with some choices we're going to have to make as a community, so the more people that can help us understand what their choices are it would be very, very helpful. So encourage that feedback. Be patient with us. We're going to try to work through this. So. Um, please get in touch with us. Let us know what you think. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Blaze. 
Uh, <clears throat> I'd just like to uh, clarify that there is going to be a meeting tomorrow night at, or tomorrow afternoon at SEDCO at 4.30? Is that yes. still scheduled? Yes, I beg your pardon. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, yes, uh, SEDCO is coordinating uh, a conversation, I'll say, with interested parties and business owners um, in the area of Hygis Parkway. Oh, right. There's an ongoing conversation about broadening uh, the allowable uses and such. Uh, this is uh, an, initi an initiative of the Long Range Planning Committee. Mm -hmm. and so at 4.30 tomorrow at SEDCO offices at Willowdale Place down here in Route 1, uh, there is a, uh, an opportunity for folks interested in that conversation to be part of it. And Thank I you. apologize because I'm on long range planning and I <laughs> totally forgot to bring that up. Well, oh, well. That's it. <laughs> that's it. How's everything clear? <laughs> Thanks. Um, I just wanted to touch on this again. I know you're going to get more and more sick of me saying this, but um, we are working on the Facebook stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it, is a, it is a longer process than I had realized it was going mm -hmm. to be. Um, I'm hoping that pretty soon we'll have something to go in front of rules and policy um, for them to take a look at to make sure that you know everything has to be done just right. Um, not not always the speed at which I like it to go, but it has to be done in a certain way to make sure that you know there is eventually going to be a time where I will not be here or Tom might not be here or whoever is working on the Facebook or Twitter will not be here, and so there really does need to be something in place so that we're following those those rules. Um, so we are working on that. I promise you I'm gonna we are going to get it done and get it out to the public. Um, and along with that will come some other things that I'm trying to get up and going um, that will help us be more engaged with the community. I know we're all getting tired of me saying this, but I am <laughs> really trying to push for that. Um, I think I feel like I had one other thing. Oh, don't forget we Still Project Grace, mm -hmm. um, still the set, still the, the bags, the green bags. You can be filling those up. Tody has a ton of them <laughs> in her office. Um, help your neighbors. It's so easy to do. Um, and we still have a lot of people with these storms that are in desperate need of um, heating oil, and they're not getting it, um, especially our elderly population. So I encourage you. I know a couple of counselors touched on this last time. I encourage you to check in with your neighbors, um, and not just the elderly neighbors, but uh, there's a lot of, dis as, we're, as I've realized going through ordinance, we have a lot of disabled people in the town of Scarborough. Um, and when snowstorms are brutal on those people, and just bringing in their trash cans or taking their trash cans out, little things like that, actually can make um, a really big difference. So um, I encourage you to do that. Uh, again, we do have that meeting tomorrow night. It is not open to the public, um, but I will have a report um, on my Facebook page, and we'll try to tweet something out about how that goes um, after that meeting. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Yes. Councilor Donovan. Uh, I attended the uh, school board workshop with our Scarborough delegation last week. Uh, Councilor Katerina also uh, joined me, thought that was a, an important enough event for uh, a few of the town councilors to attend. I just wanted to report back just a little bit of some of the things that caught my attention. Uh, 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 Jackie Perry, uh, uh, who always gets to pretty probing questions, made a very pointed comment about what have you done, delegation, for Scarborough? Now, I think the, some of the answers got a little deflected because you start thinking in terms of, I helped somebody who called me up. But it really is the broader question of tax policy, uh, what are we going to uh, be trying to do here that benefits the community of Scarborough? Are we going to try and burden the income tax or the sales tax or the property tax? Because those are the three primary taxes that our state and municipal governments all rely upon. So it was, it was a pretty good discussion. And uh, Kelly Murphy uh, spoke to the issue, I thought, very eloquently uh, when she was talking about what are the key factors that would uh, improve Maine's economy. And drawing a young, educated workforce was the, uh, probably uh, a consensus opinion as to ways to improve our, our economy. And the question then became, what draws an educated, uh, a young educated workforce. On the one hand, the point was made by one or two of the delegation 
that low income tax was a driving factor. Kelly uh, 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 Murphy made the point that the quality of life for young educated families is what uh, draws people to Maine and quality of life uh, the most important or one of the most important factors is the quality of your school system. So I thought it was a pretty eloquent defense of, of supporting schools. Uh, I've been, since I've been on here, uh, mindful of the restraints we have for property tax. But I think it's a good argument to tell you that maybe since property tax comes largely uh, as the basis for uh, supporting schools, uh, if we overstress that, we have to, we have to fund our schools. That's a, cri that's a, critical, a critical element of a long-range strategy for success uh, in the state of Maine. So it's a, uh, there's no right or wrong answer, but it is something people should be thinking about uh, uh, as we see this great debate taking place in Augusta. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Well set this evening, thank you. Okay, that leaves me. Um, before I forget, I found out today that the Scarborough Academic to Calphorn won yet another state. Woohoo! <laughs> and they, w I know, I forget, I have no idea how many that is. I know my daughter was on yeah. Academic to Calphorn at 20 something. There is like a, there is a 20. Right, there. and they're going to be going to California. Um, oh, that's great. That's easier than Hawaii. Not Hawaii. Hawaii was last year. <laughs> I know. It was last year. It's easier, it's easier for us to get them to California than Hawaii. They? So they will be uh, out raising money, I'm sure, uh, to help with that. Um, I just want to tag on to uh, Councilor Donovan's comments. I also went to that meeting with the legislative delegation uh, regarding the school formula. I did email some questions to Senator Millett about well, how they get the valuation, and is there an appeal process? And the state, she forwarded on to State Department of Education, and they did get back to me. And basically said it's some sort of an average of the last three oh. years, I'm looking at times, <laughs> of the last three years of valuation, and, and that if you want to appeal, you can go to the tax people and appeal. And I said, well, whoa, 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 yeah, but how about can we appeal to the Department of Education? And apparently there is a way to appeal to the Department of Education and it has to take place by March. Uh, I've lost it now on here. Yeah, but, yeah, it's like March 30th maybe or something like that. I CC'd um, the superintendent on that. So, I mean, and I'm sure they know, but I just, I just feel as a council we gotta keep an eye on you know, what's, what's going on with uh, the fact that we're taking pro one of the highest hits in the state, if not the highest hit, in the school subsidy formula, which is not good. Um, I know uh, uh, Chair uh, Holbrook asked uh, Mr. Hall to come up with a figure that if nothing changes, I mean, if everything goes through the way it is with the homestead and, and whatnot, and correct me if I'm if I get the figures wrong, but on an average house in Scarborough, which believe it or not is $300,000, which is quite a bit of money, um, I believe the tax increase would be $300, is that sure. correct? Before we even start talking about anything else. So this is why, you know, I just want people at home to pay attention to what's going on in Augusta, get a hold of us, get a hold of anyone in our legislative delegation, and let them know that, you know, we need to keep property taxes stable in Scarborough. Uh, and that's just essential. So that's it for me for this evening. And that being said, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? No? Okay, that's it.